Okay, we're gonna dig into how to record a YouTube video with OBS by starting with OBS settings. What will give you the best quality when recording something off your computer like gaming or possibly some kind of a software tutorial or maybe you're you know, talking over a music video or something like that, a reaction video. What would be the best settings to get you the best quality with OBS? Then we're gonna dig into scenes and sources. We're gonna discuss how to move your, your face around the screen with different button, clicking different buttons to get you to move around so that you can demonstrate different areas of the screen. And then we're gonna get into what's called audio ducking, which means that when you're talking over the input of a either like an online game or possibly you're a DJ and you're talking over music, how do you keep the audio of your mic prominent over the sound of the computer program like the game? We're gonna talk about that too. It's gonna to be a good video. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Let's, let's get, get this, this party, party started, started right, right now. Okay, let's open up OBS and go into the settings button in the lower right hand corner and that will open up your settings window. And we're only gonna be concerned with making changes to your output parameters, your audio parameters, and your video parameters. We don't have to worry about general, stream, hotkeys, or advanced. So let's go into our audio for the first time and make some simple updates here. I'm gonna assume that you, you have a microphone, you're gonna to wanna to speak to your viewers, and I'm gonna assume that you wanna record what comes out of your speakers on your computer. That's known as your desktop audio. So go into the first parameter here under devices and select default. And then skip desktop audio too because most people don't have one of those. We'll go into the mic auxiliary audio and we're gonna select your microphone. So that would be in my case, the ATR USB microphone. And what this is doing is it is assuming that you're gonna to wanna to use these audio inputs for every source that you create. In other words, you don't have to create sources and designate these two things in every one of your scenes. The system will automatically allow these two inputs in every scene that you create on the system. The the reason why these parameters are here is because it's asking you what sound inputs do you always want to use and in my example here we're going to be selecting a microphone and desktop audio that's why that exists okay moving on let's go into the video parameters and this is where we select the size of the video that will be created when you when you hit save essentially on OBS it's kind of confusing because it has what's called a base canvas versus an output scaled resolution okay and the difference between the two is simply that the base canvas is what you see on OBS the screen size and then the output scaled resolution is the size of the saved video so in our uh, example here being that we're going to hit record and record maybe uh, uh, gameplay or maybe we're going to provide a tutorial on some kind of software that's running on our computer we're going to keep the base canvas size and the output saved video size the same so uh, in this example I'm going to stick to uh, 1920 by 1080 for both okay and that's 1080p you can go larger if you like but just keep in mind that the larger the size the bigger the file size so if you're going to do a 15 20 minute video you could be staring at over a couple gigs maybe two or three gig file uh, so just keep that in mind. The downscale filter is what you select to down, downsize the file for streaming. So we don't need to worry about that because the base canvas and the output scaled size is the same. We don't have to modify that. The common FPS value, I like to select 60 frames a second. Yes, it'll make your saved video file much larger, but the effect of 60 frames a second is absolutely fabulous. It makes the motion of your video so smooth and slick. It's really cool. So I'll hit apply to that. And let's go into the output parameter and go up to the output mode and make sure that you have it selected as advanced. And we can skip over the streaming stuff because that's not what we're doing. We're just recording a video. So let's click the recording button and we can assume that the type is standard. We will select our uh, file or folder that will contain the saved video file. So in this case, it's going to be in a folder in the downloads folder called 0000. I've checked off generate file name without space. In other words, if this is unchecked, OBS Studio will save the video file with spaces in the, in the naming of the file. I'm not too crazy about that. I like underscores or dashes. So I put a, ch a check mark there. And then it comes time to designate the 
the file extension that will be used for the saved video. I highly recommend that you choose MP4 because it is the most widely accepted file format for editing videos, for uploading videos. All the programs recognize it. You know, Twitter recognizes it. YouTube recognizes it. It's just widely used and it works. MOV is questionable, FLV, all that stuff is, is kind of funky. So select MP4. And now comes the time to choose what will actually generate the file itself, the encoder, okay? So you either have one of two choices. Either you have a graphics card on your computer or you don't. If you do, consider selecting the graphics card as the encoder, okay? It's gonna do a better job than your CPU in most cases. If you don't, then you're gonna to have to select the 264. When I select my NVIDIA encoder here, it gives you a very interesting rate control option, and that is lossless. And the reason why I like lossless is because the system will not change the quality of the video regardless of how much motion is going on in the video. You get what you get. You get what you see. It's just a raw file generation. If you get into CBR constant bit rate or variable bit rate or these other rate control parameters, the system's going to change the quality of the video based on the controlled bit rate based on how much motion is going on in the video. You don't need that when you're just generating a regular file for upload. That's for streaming. So if you can select your video card as the encoder, I recommend selecting lossless. And that means that you have no need to worry about the bitrate because there is no bitrate control at all with lossless. Uh, finally, with the preset, we'll just have it as max quality, profile high, uh, GPU U0, and max B frames 2. I'm not so sure what those parameters are. I'll, I'll be completely straightforward with you. If you know what those mean, I really would like to know. Put them in comments and let us all know. Okay, so that is the parameters for OBS. It's pretty simple. Uh, maybe the only other thing you may want to consider are the uh, audio bit rates for the channels that we designated, which was track one and track three. Scott Victor was incorrect when he suggested that you change the parameters for track one and three. He should have actually said track one and two. Maybe next time Scott said drink some coffee before making a video. Okay. And you might want to just make those 320 for both of those. That way you get the best quality sound. Hit apply and hit OK, and you are set. OK, let's dig into the scenes and sources with OBS Studio. OK, let's open up OBS, and we're going to create our first scene. This is when it starts to get really fun. I've created a scene already. I hit the plus sign and, and named it Scene 1. And uh, let's go over to the next uh, little box over here called Sources, and I'm going to hit the plus sign. And in my example, I'm going to select a YouTube window. You could certainly select a game capture source or actually select window capture and select your game that way. Uh, in this example, I'll just type in YouTube window. Okay, hit OK. And here in the window pull down, I'm going to select my Brave and it's labeled Unreal Tournament 4K. I'll hit that. And there, as soon as I hit that, I begin to see the window with the game inside of it. Now, so that I don't see any white from top to bottom, I'm going to hit my Alt key and take these little adjustment boxes here and just make it so it's the actual size of the viewing area, which is really easy to do. Right. So now it just looks like a regular window. There we go and I'll make that full screen. And again, you can do this with a gaming program. You can do this with a actual, like uh, if you have, we're gonna do a tutorial on, on a non-linear editor, you could open up a window showing the editor. You can show anything on your computer with OBS. It's really cool. It's just a matter of you selecting it in sources. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is hit the plus key again, and I'm gonna select a video capture device and I'm gonna name it C922, which is what I have as my camera. I'll hit OK. And there's a, a pull down here that was labeled device and I'm gonna select C922 cam and hit OK. Now I have a window showing my face. I'll hit the Alt key again and I'll just resize it so I look squared up and looks pretty good. And I'll put that in the lower right hand corner. Now technically I could hit record over here, start recording and go into my browser and hit play 
Okay, which would start the gameplay. And I could begin commenting on the game, right? This is a commercial free video. I have all the rights to do it, and I could do it. No problem. So to stop the video, all I have to do is touch the screen in the YouTube browser, go back to uh, OBS, and it's turned off. That's it. So this is just a general idea just to get you off the ground and started. Now I'm going to create two more scenes. So I'm going to pause the camera and create them and just set them up like this one. But I'm going to move my image to other locations just so that you can understand what you can do with this thing. Okay, I created two more scenes, scene two and scene three. They both contain the same sources, which is the C922 camera and the YouTube video, okay? The only difference is here, I'll turn on the, the video on my screen here, go back into OBS. The only difference is when I click scene two, I move my video to the right-hand side of my face and scene three has my face full size. Now here's the clincher, and I'm going to turn off the sound now because it's competing with my, my audio for my voice. I'll turn that off. Here's the clincher. You can actuate the scenes. Every time that you create a scene and every time that you create a source, those different parameters show up inside of what's called hotkeys. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go into settings and I go into hotkeys, look when you scroll down. Look, scene one, scene two, which is what I created right top, scene three, big face. And if I continue to scroll, I got one called C922. That's a source. Desktop audio, that's what was designated in the audio settings. And I should have a YouTube window in here somewhere. I guess I don't for some reason. I don't see that one. But usually what happens is that gets created automatically and you can turn these off or switch them with a key that you designate. So for example, for scene one, if I wanted to switch to scene one, I would put my cursor next to switch to scene under scene one and hit the Z key. For scene two, I'm going to hit the X key. And to switch to scene three, I'll hit the C key. Hit apply and hit OK. And now when I hit those keys, it switches. It makes it so easy. Now, I have to warn you, if you are using software or playing a game and you're showing a game live, you got to make sure that the hotkeys don't interfere with the keys or you know shortcut keys with the piece of hardware that you're that you're working with so it could be that the z key is part of operating where you're going in the game and that wouldn't be good so you need to add a multiple key strokes to the hotkey so for example if i go into hotkey and instead of it being z i could hit shift z and then that probably wouldn't interfere with the operation of the of the game that I'm playing. So just keep that in mind. It's usually not a good idea to just have a single letter when you're switching scenes because it could you know cause problems with the actual application at the time. If you're interested in learning about the audio ducking that I promised, all you have to do is click this link right here. It's an easy super tutorial on how to let the audio from your microphone Take the volume of the other inputs, audio inputs, and reduce them in volume so that you can hear your voice every single time. It is a huge time saver. Click this right here. I will catch you on the flip side. Guess on.